In Macon County, Alabama, there was excitement among the farmers. All the men from neighboring farms arrived at the designated place and stood at the end of a long queue. It stretched to a row of wooden tables at which nurses and police officers were stationed. The farmers' wives stayed at home and anxiously awaited news from their spouses. The women were nervous and praying. They knew their husbands must be helped. The day before, a car bearing the United States Public Health Service logo had stopped by all the farms. Right on the spot, nurses took blood for analysis and most of those who came were sent back to their stations. But some were asked to stay and then taken back with them. The families of these farmers were both sad and happy. The men were found to have bad blood, but the doctors would cure the ailment free of charge. They received regular medication but were still in a state of confusion. The fact is, they showed no signs of illness and felt fine. On the other hand, what would they, ordinary farmers, know about medicine? But the doctors know what they're doing, their medicine, and they're free. Bad blood proved stronger than medication. Not all farmers were lucky enough to survive. Others, however, began to suffer terrible symptoms after a while. They went blind and mad. Forty years later, the Associated Press published an article with the gruesome truth about this free treatment program. It was shut down, and the U.S. Congress held hearings on the case. Subsequently, in 1973, $10 million was paid to all survivors and heirs of their victims. The story hasn't been forgotten at this point, which it can't be. Even an apology from Bill Clinton and later Barack Obama could not change the attitude towards the inhumane Tuskegee experiments. The Tuskegee experiments were not able to change attitudes toward the inhumane Tuskegee experiments. Modern medicine is largely made possible by illegal and horrific experiments of the past. Ongoing controversy over research methods continues to this day but some acts in the name of progress were so atrocious as to constitute crimes against humanity. One of these is the Tuskegee experiments. They began in 1932 because of the rapid spread of syphilis. Researchers from the U.S. Public Health Service selected 700 people from bankrupt farmers in Macon County, Alabama. All of them were black. The farmers couldn't afford medical care and many had never been to a doctor. 399 men were found to have latent syphilis. The other 201 were healthy and served as a control group. They were promised free treatment for bad blood, as every other ailment was then called. For 40 years, the scientists monitored the patients, never once giving them a real cure. All the while, the deceived farmers received a placebo and the disease progressed. During the treatment period, at least 40 families passed the disease on to their wives and 19 children were born with congenital syphilis. The disease and its complications caused the deaths of 128 participants in the experiment. Many became disabled. The truth of what was happening was not revealed until 1972 when researcher Peter Buxton discovered it. He told a reporter he knew about the inhumane experiment and the information was passed on to the journalist Jean Heller. Her story caused a huge stir. The experiment was stopped and the government paid compensation to the families of the survivors. Imagine the public's horror when in 2010, documents about an even more horrific experiment were declassified. Between 1946 and 1948, scientists deliberately infected around 5,500 Guatemalans with venereal diseases. Among them were prisoners, orphans, women of easy virtue, patients in mental hospitals, and members of the armed forces. So doctors from the U.S. and Guatemala decided to study the effects of penicillin on these diseases. None of the participants in this inhumane experiment knew that they were being infected. It wasn't until she was 74 years old that the perpetually ill Marta Orleana found out what had been done to her. One day, unfamiliar doctors came to her in a children's shelter and performed frightening and incomprehensible manipulations. After that, she was lucky to survive, while hundreds of other participants in the experiment were not. The woman who tested positive for syphilis had five children, 20 grandchildren, and eight great-grandchildren. But what was particularly horrifying was that the organizers of the study were aware of the inhumanity of their actions.
They made a conscious decision to conduct the experiment regardless of any ethical issues. The politicians apologized again, and the state compensated the survivors and their descendants. All of these diabolical experiments have several threads in common. One of them is the attitude of the researchers, who turned a blind eye to everything in the name of science because, for them, the most important thing was to get results. This attitude of the scientific world was linked to another aspect, discrimination. It was the poor and disadvantaged who suffered the most from racial intolerance and hatred. They were lured by promises of free aid, shelter, and food, and they became guinea pigs out of desperation. But often, it was even worse when the guinea pigs were not considered human at all, just because they were slaves. This already horrific chapter in U.S. history is also marred by medical experiments on African Americans. James Marion Sims is considered the father of modern gynecology and a highly controversial figure in medical history. It is his pioneering inventions and surgical techniques that are now helping women maintain their reproductive health. He performed many successful operations, wrote major scientific papers, and opened the first women's hospital in New York. Sims was, in many ways, the first. When he was doing his scientific work, treating the female reproductive system, in general, was considered disgusting and shameful. But the scientists decided to study the field anyways. And Sims was also a slave owner, so he conducted research and experiments on enslaved African-American women. Many women did need his help and could die without surgery, except that the scientists performed the surgeries without anesthesia. Some historians believe that the women did not consent to the procedures at all. Sims paid no attention to the ethical aspects of his research, believing that slaves had nothing to ask. Officially, the doctor only obtained consent from their owners. But there were those who stood up for Sims. The women he operated on suffered for their illness and could die. Some had health problems after giving birth. Young slave mothers were willing to do anything and went to the doctor themselves. But this still does nothing to justify the cruelty inflicted on them. Although Sims defenders also have an argument on this point, all the wealthy educated people of the 19th century had slaves serving them. Such was their reality, and few gave it much thought. And there was also the myth among them that dark-skinned people didn't feel pain. Can you imagine the absurdity of that? Violent behavior is peculiar to humans, especially if they feel empowered. Another psychological experience known as the Stanford Prison Experiment proves it. It was organized in 1971 by Philip Zimbardo and his colleagues at the university. The researchers selected 24 undergraduate students and randomly divided them into two groups. Some were to be prisoners. The others were to be prison guards. The scientists wanted to find out if the subject's behavior would change in the prison environment if they knew it was fake. They artificially recreated prison conditions for the experiment. The first group of volunteers went to their cells for $15 a day, while the guards went out for eight-hour shifts of three. The students were told they didn't have to play roles and were free to talk to each other as they wished. The experience was planned to last two weeks, but was completed earlier. The pseudo-guards became aggressive and violent towards the pseudo-prisoners. The five prisoners became so depressed that the experiment had to be stopped. In this brutal way, Zimbardo proved that conditions have a significant influence on human behavior, especially a sense of power and an awareness of impunity. Only in 2018, additional material on the experiment called his conclusions into question. It turned out that the scientist himself had encouraged the sadistic attitude of the student guards. Moreover, some of the pseudo-prisoners acted hysterically to go home. One student performed this stunt so as not to miss an important class. Other subjects also admitted that they wanted to help the experiment by their actions. The wartime experiments have a separate line in history. Some of them were dictated by the need to protect soldiers, others by ideology. But in all cases, the research was inhumanely carried out on prisoners and shocked by its cruelty. Of course, Nazi Germany was particularly active in this kind of experimentation. Doctors tested everything on unfortunate prisoners. Bone transplants were even used to test medical drugs in concentration camps. <laughs>
sea water desalination technology was tested on them, and they were airlifted to extreme heights. Prisoners were exposed to cold and lethal gases to find remedies for frostbite and develop effective antidotes. Experiments to study the biological superiority of the Aryans claim the most lives. Racial and ideological ideas caused the Holocaust. Millions of innocent people died. They were merely of a different nationality, sexual orientation, social class, or simply had a different, non-Aryan skull structure. Nor was humanity heard of in the Japanese Imperial Army. In the 1930s, Unit 731 appeared there. They conducted murderous experiments on Chinese and Korean prisoners of war, as well as civilians. Some of the victims were abused for years. They were tortured and infected with deadly diseases, operated on without anesthetic, and tested on drugs and poisons. The exact number of 731 victims is unknown. It's thought that there could be as many as 200,000. The facts of the inhuman behavior of Japanese soldiers were known outside the country. Many of them were later recognized in the medical field. Instead of helping the victims, the U.S. government actively used the Japanese experiments in its own health program. All because, in the political arena, America supported Japan and opposed China. We can neither change nor erase such horrific facts from history. But it's important to remember that the end does not always justify the means, especially when it comes to people's safety, health, and lives. Do you think there will come a time when the words, crime against humanity, will no longer be heard on Earth? Please write about it in the comments, like it, subscribe to our channel, and always remain tolerant.